What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to react to the 10 year vegan full blood test analysis from my Bebo Life co-ambassador Derek from Simnet Nutrition. Now if you don't know this about me, I'm kind of a nerd about nutrition. I wrote a book with 1200 scientific references. It's in Portuguese, but I hope it will be in English by the end of the year. And I'm a huge nutrition nerd. I love, absolutely love looking at other people's blood tests just for fun. So today I'm going to do that, but for the camera. And in the process, I'm going to try and give you a lot of information about nutrition, a lot of information about health and a lot of information about blood tests, because there are a lot of little details that you have to take in mind when getting a blood test. And there are a lot of markers that you should get that usually we don't especially if you're on a vegan diet and try to be as healthy as possible, you really should take a look at these specific markers that I'm gonna say. But let's see if Derek did, because if he didn't, well, he should. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek from Simnet Nutrition and today I've got an especially interesting video because I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my recent blood test results. Now, before we start this, I'm gonna tell you the part that I, I think I'm gonna comment on. I really want to see that cholesterol because I have a whole chapter in the book about cholesterol. I really want to see iron, zinc, vitamin D, vitamin B12, uh, if possible, omega-3s, but usually nobody gets omega-3s done. Then I want to see homocysteine, and in a minute you're going to see white, uh, or maybe holotranscobalamin. I want to see, please, Derek, get your testosterone checked. And the last one, C-reactive protein for the inflammation. That, that's really important. Now, we're going into your iron labs, and there are a couple flags there, and we'll talk about them in a second. Uh, th there's several different measures for iron, and you should actually ask for more than one when you get a blood test. Usually, the, the only one tested is ferritin, but try to get a little bit more, because, for example, in here, if ferritin seems for the average person, like, like it would be a little low uh, because he, the reference values go from 24 to 444 and he has 48. So he is within the range, um, the recommended range. But for the uneducated person looking at this, they would say, oh, he is deficient in iron or he's very low. He has very low iron stores. But th that's actually not the case. 48 here is not that bad. Uh, especially when you consider, like they say in the video, the iron on top, that's the, the good part, is that he is on the upper limit. He goes above the 33 level, which is really, really good. So this just goes to, to show you that you should get different measures of iron. And one important question here is that maybe we really don't want our iron to be that high because very high iron can be problematic for our health. So for most people, there's this debate in science that it should be on the average or slightly below average value uh, for iron. That, that, that would be the sweet spot. You won't get iron deficiency, you won't, you won't get any problems uh, and you won't get problems from having too much iron, which Actually, I, I don't think it's possible to have too much iron if you're following a vegan diet because there's two types of iron. The heme iron that is found uh, in meat, uh, in animal products, and the non-heme iron that is found in plants and it's also found in meat. About 50% of the iron in meat is heme, 50% non-heme. And our bodies cannot limit the absorption of iron if it's heme iron, iron from, from meat. So what happens when you eat too much meat and you get too, too much iron? Your, our iron levels go through the roof, which promote oxidation leading to diseases like heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and all of that. And heme iron is associated with all of this. And it's one of the reasons why red meat was considered by the World Health Organization as probably carcinogenic. Cool. Um, now, an important one for all of your followers to look at is vitamin B12. Right. Um, now, for vitamin B12, B12 is actually really interesting because testing our levels of B12 is not a good indicator or it's not the best indicator of our B12 levels. We should get 
other additional markers to assess our B12 levels. And that's because when you get this test, the B12, it's only testing the B12 in your bloodstream. It's not necessarily testing the B12 available for your cells. And this is a really important part. So you should also try to test homocysteine or holotranscobalamin. Holotranscobalamin would be better, but when I asked my doctor, doctor for this test, he said that he didn't even have that on a computer, so he couldn't give me that blood test uh, and it's probably going to be the same for for most people so please get the b12 and get the homocysteine when your b12 is low your homocysteine will be really really high and if your homocysteine is right is high you're going to get an increased risk of cardiovascular disease this is actually the reason why some studies show that vegans have a higher risk of stroke uh, and that's because of homocysteine and vitamin B12. Dr. Michael Greger on NutritionFacts.org has an old series about this, but it's really important that you also get your homocysteine levels checked. Now, one thing that a lot of nutritionists use here in Portugal, if someone tests their B12 levels and it's way up high, like super high, they don't even worry about testing the homocysteine because it's, the B12 is so high that probably there's no, it, there's no wish issue there. But if the B12 is average or slightly, slightly below average, there is a big possibility that you're still deficient in B12. It just doesn't show on the B12 level results so that's why you should ask for both b12 and homocysteine now for me it's really hard to understand some of these numbers because we don't use these units here but he got 200 so for example uh, derek's b12 is actually not that high uh, i would really advise him to get an homocysteine uh, uh, test done to see if his homocysteine is high or not so he's probably not deficient but his values do seem a little bit low now he has his calcium is really high and i'm gonna be honest with you it's not that hard to get calcium on a vegan diet if you're eating healthy and if you're eating lots of greens but some people just don't eat gr enough greens so please do and also use calcium fortified foods like soy milk and all of that something that is really interesting here it's his total protein because you can actually test if you're protein deficient and as you can see he's not protein deficient at all 71 and the reference range is between 60 and 80 so that's pretty pretty good there yeah that's this is next the, this, yeah this is the fun one <laughs> um so your total cholesterol is at 4.56 millimoles per liter your ldl which is classically known as the bad cholesterol it's actually um the ldl particles what carries cholesterol through the bloodstream to tissues and what can cause heart disease, right? So right. LDL particles, if they're elevated, um, they can interact with the artery lining um, and they can actually be held within the, uh, it's called the subventhelial space of the artery wall, where it can eventually kind of trigger this inflammatory cascade that leads to the development of an atherosclerotic plaque. And then, and then you've got, you know, one of those ruptures off, you got a heart attack eventually. So okay, now for one of the most fascinating parts for me, the cholesterol, because healthy vegans cholesterol always kick ass. It's the best uh, cholesterol out there. And I'm gonna have to convert this from my, for my unit because I'm not sure uh, what uh, these ones mean. So give me a second. Total cholesterol, 4.66. Uh, per deciliter, which equates to 176 milligrams per deciliter. This is actually slightly high. I'm actually really surprised with this one. For cholesterol, we really want to get our cholesterol levels, total cholesterol, between 150 milligrams per deciliter. It would be 3.9, okay. Uh, so we really sh should aim to get our cholesterol be below 150 or 3.9 because that's the only level ever proven where heart disease almost never happens. I think there's, uh, there's one case in a scientific literature uh, with, uh, with a heart attack uh, with someone with a cholesterol below 150. Now, obviously, cholesterol is not the only thing that matters. There are other things that matter. Uh, but cholesterol is the most important factor when it comes to plaque buildup or atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis is the, the only mandatory factor to develop heart 
disease. But a really important part here is the LDL cholesterol, obviously. For his LDL, he has 2.4.4, that will be 92 milligrams per deciliter. Also a little bit high. We should try and aim to get our LDL cholesterol between 50 and 70 milligrams per deciliter. 50 and 70. So for the total cholesterol, below 150. For the LDL, between 50 and 70. Mine personally was like 72, I think, so that's pretty good. And that's what we should try and aim for. And this is, this is really interesting because he does seem to have a really healthy diet. He has a really healthy lifestyle. So probably he's not going to get any heart problems anytime soon, obviously. But it just goes to show that maybe he's eating a little bit too much saturated fat, even on a vegan diet. Maybe he's eating a little bit too much processed foods. Um, we don't need to go into all your testosterone numbers uh, because you've already done that in a separate video, but they definitely look good. Your total testosterone is, if anything, on the higher range. You're uh, free, bioavailable. They look good. Um, nothing much to say there, but we can now show, since you're showing the whole test, that it is indeed your test. <laughs> yeah, exactly, um, yeah. So his testosterone, I just converted it, it's actually really, really high. It's way higher than mine, and I'm 24 years old. So his testosterone is up there. It just goes to show you uh, that even if you're vegan, if you eat soy and all of that, like Derek does uh, almost every day, I think. I also have soy products every day. And our testosterone is just fine because soy does not impact testosterone levels. And I have a whole video here about it. Now your C-reactive protein is a, a um, marker for inflammation. It's kind of the standard marker that's done. We already talked about your ESR previously. Okay, next one, C-reactive protein. Oh yes, he got C-reactive protein, which is one of the main inflammation markers in our body. And I have a special relationship with C-reactive protein because before going vegan, I actually tested my C-reactive protein because I was having trouble with joint pain and I had to ice my hands after every workout. Otherwise, the next day it would be a little bit swollen. I would get trigger finger. Trigger finger is when you can't really do this. It just comes here and then snaps down. There's no linear movement and I had to ice my hands after every workout. And that's, that's why I tested C-reactive protein and it was a little bit high, okay? And on the blood test that I got after going vegan, it went to basically zero. And as you can see, Derek also has very low inflammation. Now, keep in mind that a little bit of inflammation is absolutely normal, especially if you're working out. When you work out, you are causing inflammation in your body and you need that inflammation to recover. The problem is when that inflammation gets out of hand and it can contribute to the development of diseases. We have a lot of good science showing that vegans have consistently lower C-reactive protein levels, consistently lower inflammation levels. There's actually a really interesting study that put head-to-head -head the nutrition recommendations from the American Diabetes Association, I think, or the Cardiovascular Association, I'm not, not, not sure here, and a vegan diet, a healthy vegan diet, and a healthy vegan diet got better results, 30% uh, less C-reactive protein. So that's amazing. Going on to vitamin D. Um, this is uh, something that um, here in Canada is definitely an issue because yeah. we don't get a lot of sun exposure. Um, someone like myself with darker skin needs even more sun exposure to produce enough. And we don't get, we certainly don't get enough year round. No. Um, I know health Canada recommends that everybody supplement at least through the winter time. Osteoporosis Canada recommends people supplement all year round. Um, and I can tell you've been supplementing. All right. For vitamin D, uh, he also seems to be all right. Okay. I'm not even going to convert this for vitamin D is pretty good. And 
I was deficient in vitamin D because I wasn't supplementing it and I started supplementing it really regularly. Every day I take uh, the Vivo Life vitamin D3 because even though I live in Portugal, I don't go outside that much. I don't get that much sun. And even if I did, there's a chance that I wouldn't be able to convert that much um, light, <laughs> sunlight into vitamin D in our body because there may be some issues in our bodies. We really don't know until we test it. Uh, so please do keep in mind vitamin D supplementation. You can supplement with vitamin D3 or vitamin D2. Test your omega-3 um, score. Oh, he got his omega-3s done. Oh my God, that's what, uh, I wish I could get mine. Nice. So this one is interesting because we actually don't have a lot of data on different um, blood levels or blood cell levels of omega-3s and what leads to the best health outcomes. So this, I would say, is more for interest sake. Um, and, and, just to, and just to see kind of uh, if, if you are supplementing, is it, you know, is it boosting your levels or anything like that, which we yeah. can talk about. I'm telling you, I'm a huge nerd. I want to see every single one uh, of this. To be honest, I actually don't know a lot about these values uh, because I never got them. I never really researched them. Uh, I, I'm not even sure I can get them uh, in the national health care system. Uh, so maybe I will never get them because they will be prohibitively, prohibitively expensive. Uh, but I just, I'm just going to watch his results. Okay, he seems to have pretty good results on the omega-3 uh, scores. And he supplements omega-3, he eats a lot of omega-3 rich foods. Uh, omega-3 can be a little bit tricky on a vegan diet and I have some videos uh, going into depth about it. So I'm not going to do it here, but, but I also supplement omega-3s from, from Vivo Life. All right, everybody, and that is it for the video. Hopefully it was useful. Hope, I hope you got some great tips and some great information out of it. If you want to support the channel, support the translation to English of the book, uh, you can donate to my Patreon or PayPal down below or use my code RP5 to get 10% off on every Vivo Life order. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see you all in the next one. Peace.